All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm your Ice Dragon Ray Run. Got another manga spotlight for you today. This is My Hero Academia. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the back here, take a look at the excerpt that they've got. And then we will go from there. So, what would the world be like if 80% of the population manifests superpowers called quirks? Heroes and villains will be battling it out everywhere. Being a hero would mean that learning to use your power, but where learning to use your power, but where would you go to study? The hero uh, the hero academy, of course. But what would you do if you were one of the twenty percent who were born quirkless? Middle school students Izaku Midoriya. Again, I when it comes to these names, I always struggle with it. Uh, wants to be a hero more than anything, but he hasn't got any ounce of power in him. With no chance of ever getting into the prestige UA high school for uh, budding heroes, his life is looking more and more like a dead end than an encounter with the All Might. The greatest hero of them all gives him a chance to change his destiny. So, with that guys, we're going to go ahead and go into the book. Uh, just a reminder that I will be talking some spoilers, so if you don't want to get spoiled for this particular manga, feel free to check this video out at a later time. But uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and look at the chapters for this manga. And as we got right here, we've got uh, Izaku Midoriya, or The Origins, Roaring Muscles, Entrance Exam, Starting line, smashing into academia, and what I can do for now. What can I do for now? And then costume change. So those are particular chapters. Uh, so for this particular manga, I adored it. Uh, so the reason why I like this manga so much is that it really draw me in. At first, I wasn't really sure what was going on at first. But as the story started to progress, it started to make a lot more sense. So at the beginning of the story, basically, we have um, these villains who are doing, you know, the, the typical stuff that villains do. Um, smash through things, steal things, so on and so forth. And then you've got the essentially the heroes that come in and stop set villains. And what's interesting about this is that, you know, on my Twitter announcement, um, this story is basically a mix between X-Men and Heroes. I did like all four seasons of Heroes. Again, icy take. But um, it's basically that everyone in this world basically has some sort of quirk. I don't want to say, actually, I don't want to say everyone. A certain percentage, as it's stated in the back, has a what they call superpower, also known as a quirk. So some people have the ability to uh, make them really big, like in Ant-Man's Marvels a little bit. You have a person that can stop time, which is kind of overpowered, but it is what it is. And then you've got our All Might here, who is a just superhero badass, essentially. Um, so we follow this individual. Our main character is um, Izaku. And through his story, we start to uh, find out that, you know... Um, there's a whole process of seeing if you have a quirk or not. It's really uh, embedded into the story, embedded into the culture of this world that we're going into to see if um, he's got the genes or the DNA to actually possess a quirk. And so um, obviously there's going to be some individuals out there, bad actors essentially, that will take advantage of their quirk abilities you know, for villainy type things. And so you need to have heroes to, you know, bring peace and order to society. And what's interesting about this is that the story also kind of highlights that. Um, I'm trying to remember here. So there are um, like laws and so forth of when and when not you, you can use your quirk and so forth, which is really interesting take on, you know, just powers in general. And you've got this kind of high school, the UA high school, that the best way I can describe it is like a military academy where these heroes go to to be trained up to um, learn what it means to be a hero. And um, so, again, we continue to follow this uh, Izaku main character. And then there's one point where, you know, he wants to be a hero. He's really hoping to have one. 
But unfortunately, we find out that he doesn't have a quirk. He doesn't have a special ability that um, most of society has. So he's, he's got some friends, too, that, you know, you got the stereotypical um, friends who do have it. And they start to pick on him because, you know, he doesn't have a superpower. And, you know, he still has this dream that he's going to be a hero. He's going to try to help. Um, and then there's one, there's a couple of times where um, he is confronted with a villain. And you can see that he has charisma. He's very brave. He wants to help. But then one particular fight, he basically bit off a little bit more than he can chew and right when he was going to get sucked up into this goo type monster uh, we've got our first um, view of our other main character what they call him as the all might and as the story evolves we start to see that the all might you know quote unquote um, almighty i guess the way you can say it but anyways um meets with our main character uh, a character Izuku and he pretty much describes that yeah he's got this great power however you know he can only use it for x amount of time so there is some balance when it comes to having a special ability like this and then he was the all might essentially told him that um trying to remember oh yeah so um the all might tells our main character that you know the characteristics that he has in him the bravery the charisma to stand up and fight and try to be a hero um, inspired him to actually uh, pass down this power. So this power being the All Might, again, we still don't know the, the true name of it. We just know that he's called the All Might and has this super strong, awesome ability. And so he needed, he wanted to find someone that was able, that he can pass this power to. So that's the ability there. And then uh, he pretty much talks to Izuku that you need to train yourself to have this power. You know, your body can't handle it. And so they go on this kind of epic montage. That's kind of something I wanted to show you guys here. But uh, this kind of, this was a really cool um, event in the story where, you know, we've got our main character here who's going through the trial, who's physically training to get this power because um, it's one of those life lessons that nothing is going to be given to you that you have to go through trial that you have to go through dedication to get this certain type of power and that he has his end goal that you know he wants to be a hero essentially so um, our all might's character here puts him on this training plan these type of scenes kind of reminded me of Rocky a little bit. You know, how Rocky was trained to be the fighter, you know, going up the steps of the uh, library in Philadelphia. And then uh, one day, um, he is able to reach that goal. And the reason why he had to train so much is that the, his physical body needed to be trained up to have this power. And... It just goes to show it's a very good life lesson that if you put hard work and dedication into anything that you believe you want to do, any goals that you set, you can achieve it. And it's just a great um, kind of little plot line here that you've got this individual who, you know, who's all weak and scrawny actually puts forth the effort to actually get this particular power. Because like everyone else, they're usually born with it. And then you know, they are taking the power, um, let's see, I can't think of, the, I'm trying to remember the word I want to use for this, but anyways, they take it for granted, so they're born with it, and also take it for granted, whereas this guy, um, Azako, our main character, he actually puts forth the effort to actually gain this power, so, um, he eventually then gets the power to our particular character here, uh, Uzaku, and, um, there's been a couple of circumstances where he actually had to use the power, but very minimally because after he uses the power, um, there's always a side effect like the arm gets numb or a finger gets broken or something to that nature. That Because you know his body is not used to having this type of power, there's always going to be some sort of side effect. So um, the transfer is complete, and then um, he wants to go into the UA High School um, 
yeah, the UA High School. I almost said Academy. It's not really Academy, but um, anyways. So he wants to go to this high school that trains up heroes for the real world, essentially. And so he goes through the process. We see him go through the entrance exam, which is um, definitely type of an entrance exam that is unlike any other that really pushes all of the other um, attendees and nominees to their limits to really test the power to see if they can actually become a hero and to put through um, strategic and physical scenarios that they have to go through. And so during that situation, um, everyone is doing kind of well. And then it gets to the one point where um, one of Izaku's friends, um, Ochaka, Ochako, um, her ability is to stop time. And unfortunately, she's pinned down by one of the, the enemies of this scenario that they're doing to get into the school for the uh, entrance exam, essentially. And one interesting char uh, characteristic that our main character displays is obviously bravery and courage. So he was able to get her out of a sticky situation. And then when it came down to scoring, um, there was scoring based on how many enemies you defeated. However, there was a secret score of heroism. And obviously he got a lot of points for that. So he was able to uh, get entrance into this high school and so we continue to see him progress in his journey to uh, become a hero and again he is kind of the underdog you know just this one person who was born without a uh, a gimmick or a superpower and now we're starting to see another great example of the hero's journey where he is working hard he is training hard he's got his mind focused on a goal and he is actually trying to show that charisma, the bravery to become one. And so um, they're introduced to their first teacher. And basically the teacher said that if you score really lo low on you know, the first assignment, essentially, then you'll be expelled, which then gets everyone on edge because now they have to really perform to their best. And what's interesting about this is that there, it's very challenging, like physical activities um, it's kind of like a PT test essentially, but what's interesting about it is that everyone was saying, or the, the uh, instructor basically told the students that you can use your quirk, you can use your abilities to actually do this, whereas it was forbidden to do it at normal uh, middle school and high schools because they wanted to see what they can do with their superpower. So everyone is uh, performing really well. Some people have really lightning fast speeds. Other people can throw other um, like disc throw or ball throw as far as they possibly can and they break all sorts of uh, records. And so they wanted to see you know how well they can do. And then you know we got our um, Izaku here. You know he's struggling to meet those standards. And so he's thinking, oh, no, you know, he's going to get expelled on the very first uh, assignment, essentially. But then our main character here, our protagonist, um, he is able to focus on his ability. And so um, his mentor, basically the almighty here, which also he is all he is part of the school board as well. Our main character here, Zaku was able to balance. So not only do you have this very strong ability, now he needs to mentally learn how to manage it uh, effectively, so efficiency. So he's able to use the tip of his finger to throw the ball as far as he can, which turns out to be a record of 705.3 meters, which is awesome. Um, the artwork looks amazing, as always. I was really involved with the character, and I was hooked. I was definitely hooked on this storyline, so I can't wait to, uh, to read more of this. But um, again, we talk about the consequences of using the power. Um, he ended up, uh, it didn't really say exactly what happened to his finger, but you can tell that it was bruised. It was uh, definitely not normal that he had to go to sick bay at that point, or sick hall, whatever you want to call it. But... Um, yeah, so by the end of it, they are given their costumes. So you can see 
all of our students here were able to um, get their costumes for their particular superpower. And I think it's just badass to say the least. So, um, and we can see our Zaku here got his costume ready to go. And that's pretty much where it ends. So overall, I really enjoyed this manga. Uh, the fact that we have a society that accepts superhero powers, that the concept that only 60% of the population actually has this in their DNA, and now you have this underdog rookie of a character that you know is born of the 20% that doesn't have any powers, but yet has the heart, has the courage, has the bravery to really want to be a hero. And then now we've got this um, other character, the All Might, being a mentor to this uh, individual and is now experiencing the character growth and the journey to have these abilities and that our Almighty character is willing to give him or did give him uh, his ability as a successor because he has faith and believing and so forth. So um, overall, it it was really good. It was nice to see just a character that's not OP and growing with him, you know, seeing that montage of him, um, basically what the Almighty wanted him to do was to clean up a really trash-ridden beach. And so our main character here had to move, like, trashes upon trashes of stuff from refrigerators to uh, drawers and everything. And it was really refreshing to see that type of story and that we also have a proper mentor who um, is training our character here so um, overall really enjoyed it can't wait to continue on with the volumes of my hero academia i can see why it's so popular um, it's just a really really good story so uh, with the guys that's kind of my take and my spotlight on my hero academia volume one and with that i'll see you on the next video